Well, come on in, why don't you? Hey, Mark. Well, 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 Mr. Sherwood. You know what they say about a man dressed in a sharp suit, don't you? Yeah, I know what they say. Don't spill anything on the suit because it costs extra to dry clean. No, silly. You look great. No. Michelle is going to be so excited when she sees you waiting for her down the aisle. Thank you so much. Hey, what do you got there? Not sure. But Michelle said that you need to open it before the ceremony. She also said that I'm not allowed to stick around and be nosy. Something about for your eyes only? Well, do you want to stay around and see what it is? Yeah, I do. Too bad. You heard my queen. You need to get back in there anyway because the maid of honor's job is never done. to be a spiritual man who would treat me really good. I've never had anyone in a relationship treat me gentle, loving, and kind, like a beautiful queen. Here comes the bride, here comes the bride. If only she knew that this guy farts at night. <laughs> <laughs> nice, real nice. Man, I'm glad we opted out of the karaoke part of this wedding. <laughs> Cheers, man. Thanks, ma'am. What do you got there, big guy? Hmm. It's a gift from Michelle. A honey-do list already? This girl wasted no time. Oh, man, come on. It's not like that at all. This is a list she told me about. Dude, I thought she was just kidding, but her and Jesse put this together before we met. It's got a list of these qualities that she's looking for in a partner. Oh, and now she wishes she had married me. Better luck next time, guy. Come on, man, don't you wish? <laughs> what is on this list, seriously, that makes you think you two are meant to be? Well, first, we're both adopted. And man, her parents were so young. How in the hell could you do this to me and your mother? 
we're not helping you with this kid. In fact, you're just a kid yourself. And that boy, what in the hell kind of father do you think he's going to be? I know he loves me. And he'll do all he can to take care of us. Loves you? If he loved you, he wouldn't put you in this position. 16 years old and pregnant. You're not keeping this baby. And you sure as hell ain't marrying some deadbeat that doesn't even know how to respect a woman than to knock her up. Especially when she's just a kid herself. But Daddy... I can't... I can't get an abortion. No, ma'am. You're not going to get an abortion. But here's what you're going to do. You're going to get away from that boy as far as possible. You're, you're going to go live with Aunt Debbie, and you're going to have the baby there. And then she's going to help figure out how you can give this baby a chance with another family. And I don't want to hear another word about it. plan all right. First with Joe and now this adorable angel. The heartache of being told we couldn't have another child just flew out the door at the moment I laid eyes on this perfect angel. If you can't come with me, <laughs> a lot of blood here, man. These boutonniere pins are sharp, like samurai sword sharp. Hmm. What a drama queen. Oh, oh, how compassionate of you. Hey, was that on Michelle's list too? Yeah, it actually it was. <laughs> I mean, family and helping family has always been really important to her. She was just a teenager when her family would face one of their greatest challenges. <laughs> uh oh. Michelle, grab your sister and get in the car. Your daddy's in the hospital. Oh, it was some sort of accident at work. My God. How many times have I told you girls to get me some more water? I have to get it for myself. I can't today, Brenda. Sorry. 
Here, Dad, let me help you. I was just about to fill up your water glass. Just do it myself. Dang it. I just need you and your sister to keep my glass filled with water. Is that so much to ask for? No, sir, it's not. Oh, honey, he got upset. His dad upset about his water again. Yeah. You'd think that water glass was his life support system. Oh, he's just venting his feelings about everything he's going through. Hmm. Um, Michelle, how would you feel about us moving from Minnesota? Hey. I don't understand. I'm about to graduate. And I have my music. I know, honey, but I've been offered a job in Tulsa, Oklahoma at a brand new hospital. What about my martial arts? Mom, Brenda and I are about to earn our blue belts together. I'm sure they have martial arts in Tulsa. And it's not just about a bunch of oil wells and cowboys. <laughs> Besides, this job is at the new, brand new City of Faith Hospital. I'll be making more money than I've ever made. And with it, and the money you and your sister make from working part-time, I'm sure we'll be able to get this family back on track in no time. Mom, you know we'll all do what you need us to do. Good, it's settled. The Neals are moving to Oklahoma. next Sunday, church. We're in the Bible Belt now, ladies. Everyone goes to church on Sunday. Unless there's a tornado, then everyone runs for their hidey hole. Hidey hole? No one said anything about tornadoes. Oh, they're big, huge, scary too. Blow a roof right off a house and take anyone in it. Don't worry, Joanne. Mom says our place has a storm shelter. It sure does. And we're very close to a park with a swimming pool. Michelle, you have lunch money? I saw a martial arts place near my school that I want to check into after school today. Oh, well, I suppose that's fine, but I need both of you to look for part-time jobs. Starting in a new city, it costs money. Yep, and we know Dad's not going to find a job. No, not since the accident. His disability really limits him. So, it's our responsibility to keep this family housed and happy. Well, see, the martial arts place is looking for someone to sell memberships and teach aerobics. Good thinking. Oh my, you'll be killing two birds with one stone. Don't count on me to kill any birds. I'll just find a paper route or something. Okay. Yes, I have 
Raymond down for 7 p.m.? Okay, great. We'll see you both here then. All right, bye. Can I help you? <clears throat> I'm interested in the job. So you think you'd like to work here? I'd love to work here. I'm a big believer in maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Careful what you wish for, Mon Senor. Who do we have here? This, this is, uh, she just walked in off the street looking for a job. I'm Michelle. I'd love to work here. <laughs> I took martial arts back home and I'm a blue belt. Well, I was about to get my blue belt and then my family moved here. Where are you from, Blue Belt? I'm from Minnesota. Brainerd, Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> Brainerd, Minnesota? Here at my dojo, we train champions. Uh, Master is working with the Olympic Committee to uh, make Taekwondo an official sport. Blue Belt, do you think you have what it takes to be a champion? Yes. I can do this. I know I can. Well, this is Mel. Not only is she one of my most loyal and trusted employees, she's also a three-time middleweight state champion, ranked 10th in the nation, and a student I take great pleasure in coaching. This is more than a job, Mon Senor. This is a way of life. We can start you out with selling memberships. Do you have any other skills? Uh, I, I can teach aerobics and other exercise training. Good. Come in tomorrow at 6 a.m. for training. You get a discount for working here. And after school, Mel will set you up with training for sales and other classes you can help us with. Good to see you finally made it, Blue Belt. But you said 6 a.m. Time is but a measure of one's willingness to win. A war does not know time, but only being prepared for battle. What about you, Blue Belt? Do you have what it takes to be a champion? Yes, Master, I do. What did you say, Blue Belt? Yes, I do. Indestructible! All right, let's get on with our day and be warriors. Combo, yeah. He, he, 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 yeah. Yeah. Kick. Yeah. Kick. Not bad, Blue Belt. You coming back this afternoon for work? Yes, Master. I wouldn't miss it. Good to hear. I see big things coming your way, Blue Belt. Now get to school. Knowledge is nourishment for the mind, which runs the body and the soul. Everybody's dismissed. Mel, meet me in my office. Yes, Master. Won't be long now. Buddy, if you're thinking about calling this thing off, you better do it soon. Come on, man, that would never happen. I have never felt so connected in my entire life and so much happier because of it. Well, that's good, but you know, Michelle looks like she's a sweet, tiny package, but I bet she packs a punch, yeah? Well, she was a national Taekwondo champion. What? Oh, that explains a lot. Wait a minute, what do you mean explains a lot? You know, whenever we play a game, she has to win. Well, first, you're not any good at any of the games we play. <laughs> and secondly, she did earn her black belt in less than a year. So 
Yeah, of course. That competitive spirit does run deep in her soul. Fight! Yes, good. Very good. Very well done. Now that is the spirit of a champion. Okay, that's it for today. Everybody, get your rest, and I'll see you tomorrow. Michelle, meet me in my office. Well, you've come a long way, Blue Belt. Uh, I'm not a Blue Belt, I'm a Black Belt now. <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. I'm sure you heard that the Summer Olympic Games in Seoul, South Korea will be featuring Taekwondo as a demonstration sport. And our dojo, under my direction, will be the national training ground for the chosen ones representing our country. <laughs> this is your opportunity to show them what you're made of and to prove that our dojo creates world-class champions. I really want to make the team master. I believe you have what it takes to be part of this team, but you're gonna have to work way harder. Oh, I will master. You have to become stronger. I know I can master. And you have to do everything I ask of you. No questions asked. <laughs> This has always been my dream. I will do everything I need to do to make this team master. I will take everything you've got. Making this team would mean everything. It is the only thing. This team means so much to the dojo, to the sport, and to every American team that follows. Where do we start? What do I need to do, master? First, we need to get you more competitions. We'll have you compete in local tournaments, regional, national. And finally, the Olympic Team Selection Tournament. Yes, yes. Oh, I got this knot in the middle of my back. It goes all the way up through my neck. So I hear you've been doing some masseuse work. <clears throat> yes. Would you mind working this out a little bit for me? Yes. Yes, that's it. That's the spot. Hmm. They taught you what well your massage parlor second job. Yes, master. It's for my family. My mother is the sole provider. I have a little sister who's still in school, and I, I do whatever I can to help mom make ends meet at home. That's very admirable of you, Michelle. But working two jobs, that can distract you from your training. Oh, no, master. I will make certain that I will complete every training you expect of me and more. I'll come in early, work later, whatever I have to do. I know I can do this. This is the most important thing to me. That's what I want to hear, Mugo Honsonyeo. <laughs> Mugo Honsonyeo, do you know that building where you do massages at? Used to be a place where men would have special favors performed for them by women of the evening. Does that make you feel odd at all, knowing that you work in a place where a woman is taken advantage of by men? No, no, I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. You didn't have to stop. Mm. Well, we need to stop for now anyway. You need to go teach your class. We'll talk about this later. The Olympics, that is. Knock, knock. Mark, 
It's almost time. Those are supposed to be for the guests after the wedding. There's plenty more. Mark, the guests are starting to arrive and Michelle is almost ready and soon you'll be married to the love of your life. Hey, thank you. You did such an amazing job and I cannot wait to make Michelle my partner for life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's next on this list? I want to know more about who Michelle was praying for. Well, it says here that she wants to have someone who can understand her, to know what she's thinking even before she does. And even to the point where she needs some help and is maybe afraid to ask. That doesn't make much sense. She doesn't know what she wants, and she's afraid to ask for it. Well, yeah, see, there was a time when her mom lost her job in Tulsa, and the family had to move all back to Minnesota so her mom could find another job. Whoa, they moved away while she was training for the Olympic team? Yeah, so they moved, but Michelle stayed behind, and she continued to work and pay bills and help her mom and support her dad and her sister. <laughs> Hold on a second. So she's training for the Olympic team. Her parents are gone. She's sending them money while working part-time at two jobs. Well, that's the thing. You know, making the Olympic team was so important to her that literally for over a year, she was homeless while training. She was living in a car, barely making ends meet. I tell you what, her will to win made her so strong. And over those times, she became so brave that whatever came her way, she could handle. Michelle, you must get the victory. You must win this fight. Defeat her. Victory, Michelle. You work very hard for this. Represent our dojo. Get the victory. You are a warrior. Be a warrior. You must win. Win this, Michelle. Win it for the dojo. don't deserve to be champions. You can make yourself work, master. You have to work much harder. Yes, master. You must commit to working hard. Yes, master. Harder than ever before. You must commit to be working hard. Champion. 
Mong Han Sen Yo. Not so much anymore. You don't have to put up with that, you know. Really? Why do you? I do because, because I have nothing else. You're a real champion. You're every bit as good as I am. I'm good, but I'm not as good as you are. <laughs> Come on, you're great out there. You win all your tournaments. You destroy every competitor. Can't turn my anger into power. Well, we all have to vent somewhere. I just prefer to do it in the ring. See, that's what I'm saying. You have control. You can make it on another team. Another team? I won't even know where to start. I mean, I have, I have to stay here to be successful. That's what I'm saying. No, you don't, Michelle. There are other masters who can help you make it to the Olympics. Well, there's nothing that brings me more pleasure than to see my two best champions getting along. Of course, master. You two ladies bring me great joy as your trainer. I see you two doing many things. But it's not going to happen just sitting here. Get going! So does she make the Olympics? Is her medal part of her wedding gown? Something old? <laughs> well, she did receive her black belt in less than a year. Nobody worked harder than Michelle to be part of the team. I mean, she won 15 competitions, state, regional, and when eventually she was ranked eighth nationally. And I found online that Taekwondo used to be a demonstration sport in 1988. That's right, Seoul, South Korea, Summer Olympics. Can you imagine walking into the Olympic Stadium and all the eyes, your friends, the world are on you. <sighs> Next part of the story is my favorite part. <laughs> I wonder why. But really, she worked so hard to earn her spot on that team. Yeah, not only do you have to be a great athlete, but Lady Luck's gotta be on your side too. Even when you're at your best, the world can come upside down on you in just an instant. Dear mom, all is going well here in Tulsa. I just won another competition, which makes me now ranked eighth in the entire country. <laughs> Not bad for a little girl from Brainerd, Minnesota. <laughs> Master says that I have a real shot at becoming a part of the Olympic team but what he doesn't know is that I'm gonna make this Olympic team no matter what I have to do. Then I'm gonna show him who and what a real champion is made of. How's dad? I hope he's doing well and Joanne is making sure she keeps his water glass filled. <laughs> I think of you guys often. I just wanna make you proud of me. I'm making a little extra money and doing both jobs is working out just fine. My roommates are great. I hardly even notice that they're around. Yeah, I've got one. <laughs> hey, Michelle.
massage girl. Yeah, massage girl. Where are your next appointment? Hey, massage girl. Is it too late to make an appointment? Or are you expecting someone else? <laughs> You just ruined what could have been such a great time for you. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's the best time I've had all month. All right, everybody freeze. You ever seen these guys before? I've seen that one around, but they've never tried to bother me before. What are you doing here so late at night anyway? Uh, it's, it's a temporary situation. Just for a couple of nights. It's not a big deal, really. <laughs> only temporary. You know it's not safe. These aren't the only three guys that are crazy in Tulsa. I know. I just work right there. And I'm always really careful. It, it's it's temporary. I'm, I'm just in between roommates right now. Only temporary. I have a girlfriend that I'm gonna be moving in with here really soon and then everything will be all right. Do you have any other means to protect yourself? Pretty big gun for such a little lady. I guess you know how to handle yourself. Yes, sir, I do. Look, I'm gonna let you off with a warning because I know the owner of the shopping center. He doesn't like people sleeping in or out of their cars on I, his property. I, I didn't know. There's plenty of places to sleep. If you need help with something, a friend, someone to talk to, you just give me a call. But after tonight, I don't want to see you sleeping here anymore. Thank you. So the Michael J. Fox film, right? Yeah. The drive-in. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Mm, pretty cool. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Let's Let's do it. Hello, out, Master right? Chose. Yes, maybe. You want to speak with Michelle? All right, give me just a moment. Michelle? Hello, this is Michelle. Michelle, this is your mom. I've been worried about you. How are you doing? Mom, hi. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm fine. Everything's good here. Working out and training. We just competed for regionals, and it won't be long before we compete for the nationals, and then the Olympics. <laughs> oh, that's great news, honey. I was just worried because your letters all come with a return address from the dojo. Don't you have a place to live? <laughs> of course. I have a roommate and everything. I'm just here at the dojo training so much, I just thought I'd have my mail sent here. <laughs> well, I guess that makes sense. Thank you for continuing to send money. That really helps us out a lot. Dad's better. And Joanne's enjoying school and 
rekindling relationships with old girlfriends. That's so good to hear, Mom. She asks about you almost every day. Joanne really misses you, honey. Oh, gosh, Mom. I miss you guys so much. <laughs> Are we gonna get started or what? Tell Joanne hi for me, Mom. I gotta go. Master's about to start our workout. So I love you guys, and I'll talk to you later. Love you, sweetheart. Okay, bye. Today is the beginning of the end. Not all of you will be champions. So today, I will push you to the edge. I don't want any babies here. Are you a baby? Or a champion? Champion master. Hey, girl, you're going to let a little girl beat you? You think they let me? You gonna let you fight a girl? Is this what you want to show me? You lie here crying like a baby? Be a man, get up! You're interrupting my work. How many more babies will cry tonight? Why am I saying this? You should be so much better by now. Indestructible master. You all look like glass flowers. So easy to break. Are you breakable? No master. Then show me. Indestructible master. I know you all hate me. And now you feel like I'm pushing you too hard. You must be at your best for this next tournament. For some of you, there will be no tomorrow. You must show your strength. You must be ready. You must show your power. Or you will not be. I'm tired of looking at you. Get out of here! Neil, after you shower, Meet me in my office. One day I won't lie awake. One day I won't see your face. One day I won't hear your name. Like a ghost inside my veins. Hey, Neil, right? Yes. Hey, kiddo. What's uh what's going on? Did you find that did you find that place to stay? Really need to work on that. But I'm guessing that's not why you're here at the police station. Did somebody try to hurt you again? Yes. But I don't think 
anyone will ever believe me. Look, it's it's hard to be alone. But you gotta find somebody to talk to. But you have to open up to somebody. Let me help you. You can't. Nobody can help me. It's not true. My wife, she's a nurse. You could talk to her. How about if you let me arrange for you two to meet? You could talk to her. Maybe it'll be easier for you to talk to her. N nobody can help me. Nobody actually wants to help anyone. All they want to do is to take and to hurt. No, that's, no, that's not true, no. Look, you have my card. My wife's name is Julie. I'm confident she can help you find someone who can. Let's go inside and set something up. Come on. Hmm. Oh, this is my favorite. Compassionate listener. What? Compassionate listener. What, what, what does she mean by that? Well, you know, compassionate listener. So, someone that's gonna really listen to her. Not that they have to have these great words of wisdom or a plan to save the day, but you know that together, they can handle anything that comes their way. Yeah, I so wish I had a partner like that. <laughs> <laughs> Compassionate listening. Yeah, right, you know, like hers, mine, ours, anybody's. That's what makes her a wonderful position. Compassionate listening. Right. Not just what someone's is feeling, but what's in the soul. Because that's truly what drives the heart and body. Yeah, she takes this into consideration with each and every patient. Yeah, man. It's not just about winning and losing and how you play the game, but it's how you touch the heart and the soul of a person. And that's how Michelle treats all of her patients. And that is what made her a major player in the Taekwondo community. Hmm, that looks really good right there. I am so proud of you. This is amazing. When you first walked in, I thought you'd never be anything more than a blue belt. And a girl just picking up everybody's towels. But now, now you're on the edge of becoming one of my greatest champions. After training, we should go celebrate, just you and I. I can't. Uh, I have to work at the massage parlor tonight. We have several clients coming in late. Well, I'm sure you can squeeze in some time in for me. Uh, no, no, sorry. Uh, I just can't. Sorry. Can't or won't? Won't. Won't? 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 We'll see about that. You win a few titles, you think you're too good for master now? We'll see who needs who. <laughs> Finally a match that should push the boundaries. I am feeling me. I'm feeling me tonight. I'm feeling me. I'm feeling me tonight. I'm feeling me. I am feeling me. I'm feeling me tonight. I'm gonna pick myself a fight. Just as I thought, we have an inflated champion.
not worthy of her reward. Tonight I'm feeling mean, I'm feeling mean. I'm feeling mean. I'm feeling mean. You still too weak to beat a Mughal Hunts to you? You! What? Are you afraid to lose against the girl again? Do you want to be part of this team? Quit toying with her. Be a man already. Take her out or get out of my dojo. Coward, get out of my dojo. Sorry, excuse for a loser. You, perhaps you can teach this young, arrogant champion a lesson. A lesson that will once again have a respect for her master has to offer. Show the lesson that she deserves. Stop! This is her fight. Get up, Mugo Hoseo. You're too good for this dojo. You won't take home a gold laying on this mat. Get up and face your destiny. You're too good for your master. I say who represents this dojo. I say who is champion. You do as I say, when I say, the way I say, or get out of my dojo. I say hope you have so much more to offer. You disappoint me, Mulan Samir. Get out of my sight! Ah! Oh! What? My foot fell asleep. Really? So, Mark, Michelle never made it to the Olympics? Nope. She tore ACL, MCL, and PCL. Now get this, she couldn't afford a doctor, so she worked out the damage on her own. Using duct tape <laughs> and learning what she could on her own with rehab. Man, after all that sacrifice too, all the training, living out of her car, being alone, the abuse, the unwanted advances she took from that master? Nope, she never competed again after the injury. Instead, she turned all of her attention to massage therapy all along seeking a new direction. And why didn't she move back to Minnesota then? It would have had to have been easier than living out of a car at that point. Well, yeah, and eventually she did get herself an apartment, but that was only after her massage clientele became more regular. And that's when she became a master of massage therapy. <laughs> she was. She spent every moment reading everything she could about anatomy. And that champion mentality kicked in again. And she read every book she could get her hands on. Hi. 
<clears throat> so how you been? Really pretty good. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. You always know right where to start. The more I learn about how the body works, the easier it is to zero in on how best to help my clients. Mm. Mm. You know, Michelle, it's been a little over a year since you let Brian introduce us and we finally started getting to know each other. Yeah, it's been great knowing that I have friends like the two of you and that there are even people in the world like you who care so much about others. <laughs> And I see you so many times take so much joy in studying those anatomy books. Well, you know, my mom is a nurse and I guess it was just me watching her study all the time and seeing my dad become more disabled every year. I mean, that all made me want to learn more about health. I see that, but there's also this determination. Well, I just, I don't want to be like them, sick. The more I understand how the body works, the more I feel like I understand what it takes to be healthy, and the more I wish I could find a way to help others live better too. Okay, what I'm getting at, Michelle, is, I mean, you're a great masseuse. I've never experienced anyone better. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm sure this is a great way to make a living. Soon I'll have enough clients to invest in a newer car. <laughs> I'm really happy for you, Michelle, but Brian and I have been talking for a while and we believe you need a break. Well, to tell you the truth, Julie, I am so blessed to have this job and to have you two as friends and clients. Plus, my list of clients almost grows every week. <laughs> I'm sure it does, but you work so hard and with everything you went through training for the Olympics. Yeah, I definitely learned a lot then about hard work and especially about people, who to trust and who not to. I learned what it was like to want something so bad and to be so close. Yeah, you've definitely had a lot of obstacles to overcome. And people who made it seem like my goals were so far out of reach. Okay, look, you trust Brian and I, don't you? Yes. <laughs> and you know we both want you to succeed. Yeah. So let us do something for you, Michelle. I mean, we both think it's yet to be seen what your greatest victory involves. I don't think I understand what you're getting at. There's always been something greater for you out there. There always was, there always will be, but you have to set your mind to it and make it happen. Michelle, do you understand? I don't. Taekwondo was all I knew. I mean, even if I had made it to the Olympics, I have no idea what I would have done after. Okay, well maybe it's time to start giving some serious thought to that. Maybe it's time to make a decision, take a chance, and Brian and I will take it with you. I still don't know what you mean. I can't compete anymore. My leg. I, mean, I just can't do anything like that ever again. No, Michelle. But there are other things you can be great at, maybe even the best at but you have to decide what that's gonna be. Look, here's what we've decided. If you can decide what it is you wanna be, we wanna pay for your first semester of college. <laughs> because we wanna get you started, because we know that if once you're on your way, there's no stopping you. Okay? Hello? Mom? Michelle, my word. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Your dad's the same, and Johan's busy with who knows what all and who with. And uh, I'm, I'm good. That's nice, Mom. Can I ask you a question? Of course, honey. What's on your mind? Why'd you decide to become a nurse? Ooh, lots of reasons, I suppose. Uh, geez, that, that was a long time ago. Well, do you remember any or even just one of the reasons? Well, as a family, I, I knew we needed the money even before your dad's accident. So, 
Was money the only reason? Well, never really told anybody this, but when your grandmother was sick and in the hospital, I noticed, well, I, I noticed the nurses were so attentive with all the patients. Her doctors were good, but they all seemed so busy, had very little time to spend with us, or on the floor either for that matter. But the nurses, well, they made us feel like family. They seemed to care as much for the family as they did about grandma. And their compassion really struck me. And it made me realize that I want to do something to help people in, in a very special way. I had no idea. Why are you so full of questions? I just, I think it's time to start thinking about a future. And all I've thought about the past few years is Taekwondo and there hasn't really been much room for anything else. But now, now I think it's time to start making room for a future. Well, first you need to figure out what you enjoy doing because you might be doing it for a very long time. And then let your heart, your passion, do the heavy lifting. Michelle? I know what I want to be. That's great. What is it? I'm going to become a doctor. Well, let's go inside and tell me all about it. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't you think this story is getting a little hard to believe? Well, I mean, she's... She's working on being a homeless Olympic champion, and now she has somebody footing the bill for college so she can become a doctor? She became a doctor, dude. And a woman can be anything she That's wants right. to be yes. if she puts yes. her mind to it. Yes, but what I'm saying is maybe Mark is telling this story with a little bit of bias because he's so in love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can vouch for Mark. Yeah, me too. Or should I say, we can vouch for Michelle. Oh. Yeah, Mark hasn't told you this part, Jim, but you're gonna find this even harder to believe. Yeah. Remember, we set her up with her first semester of college, and then she didn't need another dime. No, nope. she did so well in school that every semester she won scholarship after scholarship and put herself through medical yeah. school. She sure did. And it was that champion mentality, that will to survive, and of course, the encouragement of a few great friends mm -hmm. that got her all the way through. Well, and let's not forget, she went into medicine to help people. And then she became a doctor, and she met Mark, and we've all lived happily ever after. Well, she, she did become a doctor, but happy? Well, that was still a heartache away. All right, Dr. Neal, come on in. I'd like you to meet Dr. Connors. Hi. Hello. Nice uh, to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Dr. Connors. <laughs> you come to us as a, sort of a first round draft pick, so to speak, uh, with your uh, impressive scholastic resume and uh, your eagerness to put your education into practice. Well, I really appreciate that. But I'm just so excited to learn from each one of you at the clinic as well. Good to know. And uh, to get you off to a good start, I'm going to have you spend some time with Dr. Connors uh, for a few days as you get acclimated to how our practice works around here. Absolutely. Look forward to it. Daniels? Trial prescriptions. Uh, you can call me Kim. It's uh, nice to finally have another uh, female doctor around this place uh, full of antidiluvian thinking testosterone. <laughs> Usually, the first few days, a new doctor will shadow a couple of us just to see how the clinic works and how we work with patients and how best to keep up with the pace. Well, you doctors have plenty of time to get acquainted. 
let's get out there and help a lot of people feel better. Thank you. Get used to the pace? <laughs> yeah, girl. There are a lot of people around this place who need our attention, bandaged up and set up with the right medications to help keep them going each and every day. So how many patients do we see in a day? Uh, you'll probably start by seeing about 10. Really? 10 patients a day? Yes, but six months from now, you'll be clocking in around 20. If you say so. Yeah, make sure you have plenty of pens and script pads because you're going to need them. And the first couple of days, you're going to be with me. Then I'm going to hand you over to one of these old codgers. Okay. By the way, if I were you, I'd make sure I'd get myself a comfortable pair of shoes. That's, That's the only way you're going to be able to keep up. All right? All right. Mrs. Sanders. How are you doing this morning? Well, I tell you, Dr. Connors, my indigestion is back. And my back, I can't seem to get a good night's rest from all the aching. And of course, that just keeps me so tired all the time. Hmm, I see. Well, do you think I should see a chiropractor for my back pain? Uh, hmm. I don't think that'll be necessary. Did you use all the prescription that I gave you last month? I did, but it just didn't. That should have helped you soothe your issues. Well, I was certainly hoping it would. I tell you what, let's try something a little different. This will help you with your indigestion, and I'll give you a little something to help you sleep. What are you eating over there? Oh, this? Mm -hmm. It's a little hard candy. I suck on them throughout the day. It seems to give me some relief. How many would you say you have in a day? Hmm, never really thought about it. Just eat one any time the urge strikes me. Okay. I'll have the ladies at the front desk call this in for you and make sure you take each and every one of them. That's going to help us determine its effects on your issues. Well, well I guess you know best. After all, you're at the doctor. Okay, now, if we were to stay in there another second with that woman, she would have talked to you to the end of roast of the day about everything that goes on with her all week long. Couldn't that help us learn more about why she's sick in the first place? Maybe, but I doubt it. And besides, we have 20 other patients to see today, and if we talk to all of them the way that you tried to talk to Mrs. Sanders, We'd only see about four or five a day, and that's no way to keep your job. I get that, but couldn't there be something else going on that's causing her all these symptoms? Are you questioning my diagnosis? I'll chalk this down as inexperience. Mrs. Sanders has been a patient of mine for the past five years, and each of those five years she comes with the end with the same problems. Now, it would be my guess that she's not taking her medication properly, and her family history dictates her medical issues. She's been coming in here regularly for five years with the same problems? Yes, she has. Now, look, we're doctors, we're not babysitters. And what they do when they leave here is on their own free will. Our job is to provide the treatment and the medication needed to help relieve and hopefully ease or get rid of the symptoms that they come in to begin with. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to step on any toes. I'm just so anxious to learn and help people. No harm then, but you need to realize that this is a job too, and if you carry the whole thing on yes, your doctor. shoulders, it's just gonna be way too much. Hello, Mr. Leonard, what brings you in today? Oh my dear, your advice has made such a difference. I've seen so many doctors, but none of them has helped me as much as you. Well, keep doing what we talked about and keep me up to date on all your progress. Yes, so how's your family doing? Doing wonderful. She's this way with all of the patients she sees. 
Dr. Michelle has been here for six months and she should be seeing at least 12 to 15 patients a day. And she's lucky if she even gets 10 in. Hmm. I guess I have to have a talk with her. I think so. <sighs> Dr. Neal, walk with me. I have a few. Yes, sir, but I've got an appointment. Uh, they'll, they'll wait. Let's take some time. So, uh, how's it going for you? you uh, getting used to how things go around here? I think so, yes. I'm still trying to work up to 20 patients a day, but I don't know how that's really possible and truly find out what's wrong with each one of them. Well, experience will make you quicker with your diagnosis, but uh, I think by now you should start to see you don't have to listen to everything that each of them says. Well, take Jane, for example. She came in a few months ago showing some signs of an onset of arthritis. Okay, so you prescribed a corticosteroid, right? No. I talked to her a little bit more about her family history. Oh, good idea. And I'm guessing you found a history of rheumatoid arthritis? There were some. Mm -hmm. So you considered more advanced treatments, maybe a t test or two? No, I asked about her diet and her exercise routine, if any. See, that's why your patient count is so low. See, now this uh, Jane woman, she gave you a symptom. You treat that symptom. Then if she comes back in because that treatment didn't work, then you, we have a test and you find further treatments. But she's doing so much better just by doing little things different. <sighs> so, I run this clinic and I have for a very long time. So I suggest you fall into line. Yes, but... No, 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 no buts. When you're here at the clinic, you get your patient's symptoms, you offer the proper treatment and prescriptions dictated by this clinic's standards, and then you move on to the next patients as quickly and efficiently as you can. And that's it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, I do. You can make your huggy, feel-good friends on your own time, but when you're here, you're on the clinic's time and all these patients. I got it, sir. I hear you. Crystal clear. Good. Sorry to keep you waiting. Hey. Hi. <laughs> I thought they'd send some other quack in here. So I'm so sorry to hear about Liz. Yeah. She was definitely the spark that kept my flame burning. Mm. I miss her so much. But I don't miss that list of chores she had me do each and every week. <laughs> So what brings you in today? Well, let's see, I've, I've got where I'm tired all the time. Mm -hmm. And I have a dickens of a time getting much sleep at all. And then there's just, I have pains all over. Mm -hmm. hmm. I tell you what, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and write you a prescription. But what are you doing for dinner tonight? Well, my usual chicken dishes and a few sides. Yeah. You think you got enough for, for two? I'm not promising anything fancy. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure I could whip up a little something to feed the likes of you. Good then. It's a date. I'll be around 6.30. That's that from Branson. Liz loved Branson. I can't tell you how many times we'd go to those shows year after year but she still loved them all just the same. She told me. She was pretty sure you had a crush on that cute actress. <laughs> well, she was no Liz, but she could put on a show. I hope you like your fried chicken a little medium brown. Have you always fried your foods? Well, to be honest, Liz did most of the cooking. Do you mind if I look in your cupboard? Help yourself. Okay. Okay, let's see what we have here. Oh, wow. 
Now these make a good go-to snack. The rest of that stuff, mm-mm. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. So if you had to choose, eat differently, or spend the rest of your life taking one pill or another, what would you choose? Mm -hmm. I guess I'd choose eat differently. Good, then there's no better time than now to get started. Right, right now? Yes, right now. Let's go to the grocery store now. What? Well, I just stopped up on groceries yesterday. Don't worry, it'll be my treat this time. I have no idea what's going on. Well, she does have her daily patient count up to where it should be by now. But You know, a lot of her uh, former massage clients are stopping by. Maybe that's what this is. Yeah, but I think there's something else going on. I agree. I'll, I'll see what I can do to find out. Okay. Thank you, Chef. Hi. Hi, Michelle. How are you? <laughs> Good. Good. It's nice to get together and not just bump into each other between patients. Oh, yeah. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like I'm running laps all over that place. It can definitely feel that way for sure. But you know, there are a lot of people who are impressed by the way you've been able to get your patient count up and start to follow along with the program. Yeah. Well, when I was a massage therapist, I would spend anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and a half with each patient. Thank you. I bet you're glad you don't have to do that anymore. I can't imagine spending that much time with Mrs. Sanders. <laughs> After about 10 minutes, that woman would talk my ear off. And I would probably want to find a way to sedate her in one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would think so. But when I asked all the right questions of my massage clients. They and their bodies would tell me exactly what they needed most and how best to help them. So you didn't give just the same massage to each one of your clients? My masseuse just asked me how many minutes do I want it for and if I want a deep tissue or a sweetest massage. That's the thing. Your masseuse should ask What's going on in your life? Have you changed your exercise routine? Or did you finish training for a big run? Or has life just got you stressed out a bit and you're in for a good massage? The stressing, that's why I usually go in. Definitely the stress. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do. But what's causing the stress? Is it work? stuff at home, or whatever it is. Knowing this has always helped me find the pressure points I need to focus on with each of my clients. In theory, what you're saying does make sense. But in practice, I just don't see how it's ever going to work. But it is working. For over a year now, I have been consulting with my patients more than a typical visit many on my own time to help guide them to becoming well. Does Dr. Daniels know you're doing this? No, but the results are amazing. 85% of those that I have worked with show significant signs of improvement, faster and more significant than traditional methods. 
And the other 15%? They flip flop. They fall off the wagon when it comes to their diet or exercise. You're a brave woman, Michelle. As I feel pretty strongly that if Dr. Daniels knew what you were doing, he wouldn't like it not one little bit. But it was his idea. Sorry, but I find that very hard to believe. He told me to practice like all the other doctors are expected to in the clinic. But he didn't care how I spend my own time. I don't think he's going to see it that way. And besides, I am positive that he didn't mean for you to go to your patients' homes and cook them dinner. Oh, darn. This is the hospital, and uh, I'm going to have to cut our visit just a little bit short. Look, all I'm saying is, if you enjoy being a doctor so much, you better talk to Dr. Daniels right away and get this all straightened out. Right now, though, I gotta go. Uh, Michelle, see you in my office, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Michelle, you've uh, been practicing here at the clinic for a little over a year? Yes, 17 months. In that time, do you feel you've gotten a pretty good grasp of how we operate here at the clinic? I think so, uh, yes. That's true. You have uh, gotten your daily patient count up, but your return visit patient ratio is much lower than the rest of the staff. Now, as not one might think that that's because your patients weren't happy with their treatment and were going elsewhere to seek medical attention. What? No, that's not it at all. No? Well, what do you think it is, Michelle? I mean, do you imagine yourself to be Asclepius, miraculously curing all your patients to the point they no longer need medical treatment? No, but I've been spending some of my own personal time reaching out to my clients in order to figure out what's wrong with them and what got them sick in the first place. You... what? I've been learning a lot more about my patients outside of this clinic than I have been able to learn while they are here. Patients come to this clinic for our expertise and our ability to quickly diagnose their symptoms, not to become our friends and certainly not to become our own clinic project. But they are our clients and we have a moral and ethical code that dictates that demands we find out what made our patients sick to begin with. And they also all work for this clinic, a professional environment with processes and procedures in place set by doctors with far more experience and clinical expertise than you. It's the same policies and procedures you'll find in clinics across America. But I could show you results, the difference in results. Practices all over are using a more functional medical way of thinking. I don't want to see that, nor does this clinic have any interest in your voodoo medicine. My God, God what were I, you thinking? I just want to help people be and think healthier. It's a shame, really, because you showed so much promise. I have an attitude like that. You're not going to find any clinic to take it. And I have no choice but to relieve you of your contract. You're done here. <laughs> Maybe Dr. Daniels is right. I'm not fit to practice anywhere. God, why won't you give me an answer? How am I supposed to believe in you if you can't seem to believe in me? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. If you don't want this anymore, it will look good in my place. A little bit of whiteout and I can change a name. Girl, what's going on? <laughs> You're acting like you lost your best friend. But I know you didn't, because I'm right here. I lost my job. Dr. Daniels fired me and said that I'm a booty doctor. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you hated that place. I just can't seem to get anything to go my way. The failed Olympics, now failing as a doctor. What am I supposed to do? This piece of paper still says you're a doctor, right? <laughs> Technically, yes. I still have the license to practice medicine. Then do it. There has to be a clinic in the area that will recognize the genius of a doctor that is you. Not according to Dr. Daniels. He said no one would take me. And if I can't practice at his clinic, what makes me think I could practice anywhere else? You're gonna believe all that? Not today, sister. Not on my watch. You know what we need? No, what are you looking for? Something to write on. What on earth for? I'm a little bummed out here. All the more reason why we need to make a list. All right, so if you could find the perfect place to work as a doctor, what would it be like? First, there wouldn't be any Dr. Meanie Pants. <laughs> That's a given. I want to work in a clinic that puts patients first, even above making money. Okay. That's a good start. And we wouldn't just prescribe medicine. We'll prescribe, prescribe life. Prescribe life? Explain. Yes, we will get to know more about our patients. Things, of course, such as medical past, family history, vitals and such, but also their life. What they eat, how do they sleep, exercise, relax, all of those things that make a complete person. We won't just have a regular office visit. We'll have get-togethers, study groups, bring families together, make being healthy fun as it is important. A place like that just doesn't exist. Wait a minute. What was I thinking? What? You know somebody that has a clinic like this. I sure do. Is it somebody you work out with? As a matter of fact, I do. This list, this list is your clinic. What do you mean by my clinic? Just like it sounds. You find a place, rent space, and start your own clinic. I don't know the first thing about having my own clinic. Sure you do. It's all right here on the list. Together we'll pray on the list and you'll see, it makes perfect sense. At the other place with Dr. Doom and Gloom, mm. many of your patients came from when you were being a masseuse, right? Yes, and? And when they find out that you're not at yesterday's news, they're all gonna be out looking for you. Unless you decide to make it easy for them and let them know that you're at the all new Michelle Functional Medical <laughs> and Good Times Clinic. We may need to work more on the name later. <laughs> well, now that we're in a groove of making all your dreams come true, shouldn't we start on a list for that man too? Oh, please, one miracle at a time. <laughs> we have to pray on the list so that in all of God's glory, each item on the list will come to a fruitful and gratifying beginning. God, I thank you for Michelle's heart. I thank you for her desire to prescribe life and not to just give people pills. I thank you that she really wants to hear their heart. And cut to the wedding and they all <laughs> lived happily ever after. Holy. <laughs> How'd you get invited here anyway? I am the best man. Well, he was the only guy to fit into the free suit that was offered in the wedding package. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. So I'm guessing that's when the Functional Medical Institute just took off like gangbusters. 
Yeah, and tell us the story about how you guys met. The Functional Medical Institute did start out pretty good, but it started off so good that it began to take its toll on the show and all she could handle on her own. And that's when you came in as her knight in shining armor to save the day. Michelle's not one to have anyone saving the day, but actually, it was you who did the day's saving by putting another list into play. That's how you choose to remind me? Stuff all over the floor? Just more for me to have to do? More mess to pick up all on my own? I can't, I can't do this by myself alone. Honestly, why can't I find love? Am I not worthy of love in my life? I've endured sacrifice. I've experienced pain. I've done all I can do for others. Yet, my heart still feels such an emptiness. Lord, if alone is all you have left for me, then you might as well just take me home now. <laughs> I believe I saved your mango. How long have you been stamped slumped over my doorstep? Oh, long enough to know that we probably need to make a new list. Thank you. Every time I turn a corner, you're right there, picking up one mess or another. <laughs> As they say, that's what friends are for. Besides, you would do the same for me. Okay. So, what's Michelle's perfect partner like? Well, it would be great if he believed and worked in functional medicine too. So, I can get some help. The clinic's been growing really quick. All right, I got it. Someone who's okay with you bossing him around. <laughs> no, <laughs> of course not. But I would like a partner where our personalities and our abilities complement each other. And all right, just at least in the beginning, I'll be his boss. <laughs> Good. What else is on the wish list? I want him to be a spiritual man, not just a churchgoer, but someone who practices what he preaches by respecting and doing right by others that come in contact with him. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, and it would be really nice if he was extremely good looking. <laughs> okay, yes, I got it down. He's gotta be a real hunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's all nice, but I'll trade any of that for a guy who would treat me really good. I've never had anyone in a relationship treat me gentle, loving, and kind, like a beautiful queen. I'm sorry. Mm. You've always handled life so well. I never imagined that you'd never experienced true love. I always thought you were single by choice. Nope, by fear. Fear of being damaged beyond recovery. I finally reached the stage in my life where I'm ready to let go of all the bitterness and resentment of my past. Now let's get to praying for this man of yours. All you have to do is believe in God's guidance and this too will come true. It works every time. Dear God, we pray for every item on this list. We pray for a man that will be gentle and loving and caring, who will love functional medicine and be a real hunk. 
I ask that you would bring him swiftly across her path. I appreciate all of you coming out to the Gut Dysfunction Seminar. Remember, we are all in this wellness life together. If you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to call. Thank you. Incredible. She is, absolutely. She's awesome. Seriously. Wow. Amazing. I can't thank you enough, Michelle. Working with you has made such a big difference in the way I feel. Well, the proof is in the results. And the results are looking better every week. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Hello, I'm Mark Sherwood. Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Neal. I really enjoy your presentations. I was actually here a couple of months ago for your class on motion. Oh, yeah. I think I remember seeing you there then. You were on the right three rows back. You had a girl with you, a brunette, if my memory serves. Your girlfriend? No, 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 just an acquaintance. Oh, that's too bad. She's really pretty. I thought my movement class is kind of an odd place to bring your date, <laughs> unless you two thought Movement means something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I was wondering if you'd accept my invitation to spend a little time together. You're not going to ask me to go to another doctor's conference, are you? Oh, no, no, <laughs> of course not. I was thinking more along the lines of dinner so we could get the opportunity to get to know each other a little bit better. If I say yes, can I have my hand back? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just... Me too, completely. For, For God. God. <laughs> Dr. Neal. I better attend to the rest of my patients until right. Saturday. It's until Saturday. If you're falling from a tree, if a bee is shooting style, make a wish. No, I don't fake this kind of feeling. Never yeah. felt so real. My heart is on the table because you're my everything. I do, 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 do. I want to marry you. When you're around, I know it's true ooh, ooh, The way you make me feel is so good, baby So good, so good Every single day was found a part I want to be with Hello, Mark. Welcome to Michael V's. Hi, Chef Michael. Nice to see you. Well, I see you're here for a date. Yeah, I think this may be the date. Well, then I bet you're here to see that beautiful lady on table three. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, thank you. As I was walking in, I saw how beautiful you looked, and I felt as if I were in the presence of royalty. <laughs> Would you mind if I address you as my queen, your royal highness? Okay. <laughs> you look spectacular, Michelle. Thank you. I'm so glad you agreed to meet me here tonight. Of course. Hello. Hello. Could we get a couple of waters to start with, please? I don't see why that should be a problem. As soon as the wait person arrives. Thanks. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Jessie, one of Michelle's most trusted and dearest friends. That's right. And we <laughs> thought that if you turn out to be the man that we've all prayed for Michelle to meet, you wouldn't mind if I came along and chaperoned Michelle tonight? Well, good, because I'm starving. <laughs> Michelle, what do you think is a healthy choice tonight? <laughs> um. And it was love at first sight. <laughs> it most certainly was. I witnessed the whole thing. If I had seen you at that dinner, I'd for sure have dined and dashed. And that's why we read a beautiful celebration of cherished love between Michelle and Mark and not a Neanderthal like you. Yeah. <laughs> Silly me. It was my understanding the wedding is out on the terrace, not inside the groom's dressing room. Hmm.
<laughs> what in the world are you doing? <laughs> well, I, sweetheart, I was told I wasn't supposed to see my queen in her again before the ceremony. <laughs> I'm not sure he's supposed to tell everyone her entire life story before the ceremony starts either. But here we are. But, sweetheart, it's that story that makes you the most amazing woman that I get to cherish my entire life. Not if we don't get down there well. and say our vows. What a beautiful feeling to be close to you. There's nothing else I want to do. Ooh, and from the fields of flowers you chose to pick me. You're spreading sugar on my misery. And I don't fake this kind of feeling, never felt so real. My heart is on the table cause you're my everything. So good.